just a few moments to get. Sorry, I was looking at my mic. Um. Let's see. Give me one second. I apologize for all the noises. Um. Let's see. Hopefully, you guys can hear me. I updated OBS, so it's kind of. It's kind of thinking. for joining Roman Viking, although I know you wouldn't miss it. Let's see. We're about to get ready in just a moment. Get started in just a moment. Let's see. Alright. This is the real Bissell Jabelle, the English VTuber. Yes, it is. It is the real one. As opposed to the fake one. Okay, um. Okay, I think we're gonna get started. So we're gonna hit load. I don't remember where I was. Okay, last date was December, t December 20. Okay. So it'll have been December 22nd, right? Yeah, yeah, okay. I think I was here. Anyway. The next day I wake up feeling a little lightheaded. It's almost noon already. <laughs> okay, I think sleeping late is fine since it's Sunday and there are no classes. Not just Sunday though, but the festival as well. And I have a bunch of hair on my mic. That's lovely. From my window I can already see some people at the sofa booths slinging noodles off the plates people with a craving for low quality food. <laughs> I throw back a handful of rewarding meds and ponder how to spend the day. Excuse me, there will be a few exams in the coming week, but I don't consider those as ominous as others, so I'm not as worried about them as I probably should be. With no urgent obligations regarding education, I should be free to spend the day at the festival as I like. If I see Kenji, I'm going to fight someone. Anyway, finishing my morning routine, I exit into the hallway, intending to go out and find something to eat. Don't, 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 I hate this kid. Passing by his door, I decided to see what Kenji's up to with bad impulse. I'm not gonna fight you, I hate Kenji. I'm curious if he has any plans that everybody is doing everyone is doing something. <laughs> then again, I can picture him having built a sandproof shelter in his room. Or possibly something like a fort complete with no girls allowed sign. And with the girls cross that body cruelly schooled underneath it. Not oh god, oh jeez. Knocking on his door, which is luckily devoid of any kind of sign, I hear the unsettling clicking of at least ten locks being pulled back. The door opens up a crack. Who is it? <laughs> You're supposed to ask that before you open up the door. Oh, it's you. Damn, it's early. It's not really that early. What is it, man? Nothing, we're just gonna ask what you're gonna do today. Is it? Maybe. How do I skip? I forgot. Oh, it is. Okay, yeah, that's much better. I, I'm like, it's been so long. Okay. There we go. Thank you for reminding me that's a thing. Well, I joined the art club, so I guess I'll go with them. You did what? I joined the art club. Man, uh, man that was a bad move. Really bad. You don't know what kind of girls there are in the art club. Troubled? <laughs> Troubled angsty kids to tear your heart out and eat it raw. <laughs> Cause it works so well, Jeffrey. <laughs> I hate Kenji. Well, I know one art club member. I don't really see. <laughs> he would. I, I don't really see Rin suddenly becoming a psychotic murderer. That seems unlikely. Don't say that. Don't fool yourself. You have no idea what you're dealing with here, man. They are the worst kind. Yeah, we aren't girls. You know, we're the worst kind. 
they drag you in with all this fancy pantsy shit. And when you least expect it, bam! Bam. What? <laughs> she really is! <laughs> Kenji seems slightly phased at my skepticism. Skeptic I cannot. Skepticism. I cannot talk, I apologize. But not any less loony. It doesn't matter. Tread carefully, man. Tread carefully. <laughs> he fingers his scarf nervously, faster and faster, like he's trying to start a fire, then slowly begins to calm down once the panic attack finishes running its course. I'm going to have some, <laughs> some place to hide in the safe haven. And then knock the lights out of myself so I don't have to experience this horrible day. I have the perfect thing for that. I must prepare now. Don't go to the festival. Okay. Later, dude. <laughs> the door slowly closes with a low creak. I don't know how to feel about what Kenji just said. Oh, Kenji. The happy hubbub of the crowd greets me as I push myself through the main door and step outside. I must prepare now. I must prepare for the girl apocalypse. <laughs> the school grounds were transformed into festival grounds over yesterday and this morning. Colorful stands line up the main walkways from the main entrance to the school building. Some people are still carrying stuff to and fro, but behind most counters are relaxed students look like they're good to go. Most of the other students have been up early to finish the preparations. A feeling of guilt passes through me, but it soon goes away. I'm just a lowly tran- a lowly- a lowly transfer student after all. Some visitors are already strolling around the grounds. Okay, my lights suck. There are some young families with the perturbed parents trying to keep up with the overenthusiastic offspring. A few students of our own are accompanied by their parents, and a lot of old and young people who are here for no reason I can imagine. Karyong bursts into life and the principal's squeaky voice announces the opening over the festival over the PA system. <laughs> Everyone applauds quietly if, if a bit enthusiastically. Yay! A school festival. We didn't really have festivals at my old school. It, still, it feels kind of old fashioned, especially considering the school I came from, but it's still so much exciting. Yo, thanks Rose, I appreciate it, you are the bestest! A day off feels sweet after the first week of hard work despite me lying on the hospital bed for four months prior to this. Oh, Rose, I just want to let you know I'm really, 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 really hoping to stream Witchy Life Story again on Sunday. Cross our fingers, I just get lazy and tired. Anyway, I recall even wishing that I could go to the math lessons during my stint at the hospital. I can't remember the program for the festival even though Mutu threw it during class just the other day. I know, but like, I am always so, but I want to stream, because I don't know if you've seen Witchy Life Story, it's really good, that's the, that's the game I stream on Sundays, so, fingers crossed, yes, I will, yes, I step off the dorm steps, intending to take a tour around the grounds to see all the stuff that others have set up, but I only make it down to the bottom of the stairs. Rin! <laughs> I love Rin. Oh, I'm so sorry, Roman Viking. A few people are studying Rin's mural on the wall, while the artist herself is lounging on the sidelines, leaning against the wall and looking extremely bored mildly under, mildly under the <laughs> I love Rin! Whoa. Good morning. Hello. How's it going? Nowhere? <laughs> I'm stuck. What do you mean, stuck? I mean, I can't walk stuck. I think my legs are out of order because of yesterday. Does it hurt? It's hard to say. Maybe. The strain of working on the mural was greater than she let me know. I thought it was just a bit of tired muscles or something. I mean, I mean to ask something farther. I, whoa. But Rin just moved on to another topic. Teacher's friends came by. <laughs> Rose, stop! That was so funny! <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh. Then they headed into town for lunch and <laughs> asked me to go. <laughs> it was a good thing my legs hurt so much. But you're stuck sitting there. That's not good. <sighs> okay. Rose, I'm gonna have to tell I'm gonna have to tell Roman Viking the story. So today <laughs> 
So at work, um, someone... <laughs> at work... <laughs> Someone like sprinted to the bathroom, like sprinted. So I messaged Rose saying, gotta go! And we both started like crying. We were laughing so hard. And I was working with someone. And I'm like, I'm so sorry because I started like crying of laughter. Anyway, I'll just wait till I can walk again. It should be either sooner or later if you think about it for a while. Tito is happy that I finished the mural. He should be. <laughs> yeah, we have fun days at work every day. Unless it sucks. But yes, we have fun. But I wonder if it's finished after all. Oh? I thought yesterday that I'd done everything, but now I'm not so sure anymore. I should paint more details. Maybe. Probably. It's very hard to decide. Finished or not, the mural looks great in broad daylight. That's scary. <laughs> He was like, he was literally like sprinting across the the, the place. He <laughs> like slammed the bathroom door shut. <laughs> Gotta go. Various human body. <laughs> that was so great. And I was with that member, and I was sitting there like losing. I was dying. <laughs> Various human body parts repeated over and over in a mile. In a mile Wildly mutating, mostly disfigured the variety are the main <laughs> Heck yeah! <laughs> they are rough looking as a thoughtlessly placed and rudimentally painted, but a great deal of thought and care has gone to each and every one of them. Yes, we do. Does this one have a frog growing out of its head? It's a goldfish. What's that? It's titties? Anyway, <laughs> the wall. <laughs> Rin really is! The wall is so wide I have to turn my neck from side to side to see the entire painting. It's hard to consider- <laughs> Oh my god. It's hard to consider as a single piece. The elements don't seem to fit together, but I guess they do create some kind of hole. <laughs> Abstract as it is, I have no idea what it's supposed to be portraying, but it looks nice. That's enough for me. I settle myself next to her and le leaning against the wall like she does. The happy noises at the festival are becoming louder as more and more folks enter the grounds. <laughs> the dorms are far from the main attractions in the main building and the stands are on the courtyard, so most vi visitors have not found their way here yet. Rin. <laughs> as some of bored expression settles on Rin's face, making her look detached from everything that's going around her. She's being awfully quiet. I wonder if she's in pain. No, poor Rin. So what did the art people say about your mural? <laughs> the look on her face is amazing. My question wakes Rin from her daydreaming. She lazily turns her face toward me. I'm not I'm not sure. I think they liked it. Maybe they did. What about you? Are you happy with the mural? Because I kind of participated. It'd be terrible if you weren't happy. Rin tilts her head, biting her lower lip. I think it came out decently. It's not bad, but it's not good either. It's just... Is. I guess I'm alright at being empty minded. Can I ask something else? What does the painting really portray? I thought about it yesterday when you said it doesn't portray anything. But that's a logical fallacy, isn't it? You can't make something out of nothing, not even art. Rin frowns and turns her head back towards the clouds. <laughs> she looks so distraught, she's like, mm, I don't know. I'm not really good at explaining things. It's just a mural. There's nothing special to it. I said it already. She sounds annoyed at my inquiry. She's like, I don't know what I'd paint, so I decided to just paint a mural. Rin is a thinker. Rin... <laughs> the inner workings of her mind are an enigma. <laughs> it's a mural that portrays a mural. No, wait, I just thought of a better way to say it. It portrays itself. So... <laughs> exactly! I love how you know what I'm quoting. Its muralness is at the maximum, at least as far as I can do. So if you think it has some meaning, I think that's the same as this one has. That makes no sense. Meaning, I feel the corner of my mouth turning upwards into a smile that just is a tiny bit bothered. I have never understood art in the deepest meaning of the word. I get the basics. How is art supposed to be? Uh, how art is supposed to be only a means for exchanging ideas and thoughts. However, I never learned how I should interpret a piece of art to somehow divine what the artist intends to say through it. I n 
Yeah. <laughs> I know it's not any special skill, but somehow my brain never can connect the art with anything else that I want to see. All I see is a mural. <laughs> You're just like, uh... I can admire the technical skill. After all, even I know the difference between bad art and mediocre art. Mediocre art and good art. But that's as far as I can go, so don't ask me about meanings, Rin. Her reply sure made me reluctant to ask her about it any further either. So what are you doing when you get, when you get on your feet? Nothing. Nothing, but there's a the festival. Don't you want to go have some fun? I'm fine like this. You don't like socializing much, do you? I think I'm arguing more for her than myself at this point. It's not that I'm particularly thrilled about the festival either. Just a bit curious to see what it's like, and that's about it. Her answer is unsurprising. No, I don't. I guess me neither, in the end. You should go if you want to. I know, but I can keep you company. I'm not used to all this just yet, so it's okay to take it easy. I can leave though if you want to be alone. I like it if you I like it if you are here. Aw, we circle around each other's words, but eventually end up somewhere. Her saying that makes me feel oddly happy, so I stay. I'm having a hard time reading, it's a bit of a struggle. Her presence is something I like too. The odd, warm aura of serenity that she seems to emanate makes it comfortable to be silent. I really like that. We watch people walk by, the two of us silent, everyone else chattering happily among themselves. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you're right. Exactly, that's true. Students are leading their families to the dorms to show their rooms. They pass us in the mural, maybe glance at it once or twice. I pay less attention to them and more to my companion, trying to figure out figure my way past her cryptic, unreadable wall of a face. Rin's eyes flicker relentlessly from one person to another as I walk by. Is she waiting for people to stop at the mural, maybe secretly hoping someone would comment on it? I don't think anyone would assume she was the artist. We're just sitting here like a pair of hobos after all. She doesn't even have hands. I wonder if it's even an even rinse out and fish for compliments. She seems so aloof. More people walk by, some of them pointing their fingers at the mural, exchanging words that I can't make out. Someone drops a snow cone on his shoe. Too bad for him. Everyone seems to like it. I suggest it tentatively, throwing a topic in the sail summer air separating us. Rin doesn't answer right away, but now I am mostly used to her occasional slowness when she must talk. It's like she takes great care of picking her words, which is really unbelievable when you consider the jumble that comes out of her mouth. I wanted to make it so that I wanted to make it so that you can just look at it without thinking. Then I realized that it doesn't make any sense, so it became something like a mix of this and that. From far away, it looks like someone vomited a herd of butterflies on the wall, which is exactly what that obnoxious president person didn't want. Is that word that? What word? That. <laughs> what is the word for more than one butterfly? Butterflies? No, like a herd, or a school, or a heap. Oh, I don't know, a flock maybe? Maybe people like butterfly vomit. Rin looks at the mural, looking surprisingly unhappy. Oh, Rin! The middle could be better. Rin! Usually I like in <laughs> She looks so sad. Oh. Usually I like in betweens, but this was a pain in my butt. Not literally, of course. Then again, I did get that too. I guess it was literally after all. Don't be so critical of yourself. She looks at me funnily, but shuts up. At about this point, I start thinking I should really leave and do something more constructive with my Sunday. This is the pinnacle of social failure. A whole free day, a festival right outside of my doorstep, and what do I do? Sit, <laughs> Sit here with Rin. Two bystanders with nothing to do ex except to think what a pity it is to be just a bystander. Even realizing how pitiful it is, I don't do anything. I don't stand up and take off for a day of fun. Shuffle, shuffle. Fidget. Shuffle. Rin is shuffling about restlessly, constantly swinging one leg over the other knee and then back again. She has a very irritated look on her face. Is something wrong? Is, is this what? Yes. No. Yes. What? And she suddenly hops up on her feet. It's surprising. I thought she was still rendered immobile, but apparently this is not the case. I'm so scared! I have to go find Emmy or someone. I need help or something. I can help you. No, it's okay. One of us has to stay here in case something happens. Don't be ridiculous. Nothing even remotely interesting has happened since I came here except the one guy who dropped a snow cone on his foot. Let me help you, since I'm bored. So what is it? I'm so scared. Rin's lips flatten tightly against each other into an almost perfectly horizontal line. She closes her eyes and draws in a deep breath. 
When she open, I'm scared. When she opens her eyelids, the frighteningly stern look in her eyes dark takes me aback. Oh, I'm scared. Asai, you might not want to hear this, or maybe you do. I don't know, but it doesn't matter. And even if it did, you are not leaving me with any choice. Oh, no! <laughs> I'm having my period. I need some help regarding that. However, I don't feel that our relationship is yet on the level where I can allow you to pull my underwear down to the girl's toilet, even if you offer to. That's why you should stay here while I go and look for Emmy! <laughs> Oh, jeez, Louise. As blood rushes to my cheeks like the rising tide, my brain tried to desperately search for an answer. But the, <laughs> but the only thing I can think of is how much that most coherent thing I have heard coming out of Rin's mouth during these four days I've known her. Yes. Not wanting to meet Rin's eyes, I turned my face. <laughs> Turn my face aside, pretending I'm looking at someone's parents. From the corner of my eye, I see Rin turning on her heel and walking off without further ado. <laughs> I feel like going to hide under some rock. That is so funny. Oh my god. Oh, jeez. I wonder how long Rin will be gone or if she'll return at all. If she does return eventually, appearing, appearing seemingly out of nowhere and sitting back to where she was next to my place. I'm back. <laughs> she says it flatly like my blunder never happened. I prefer to forget the whole matter as well, so I keep quiet. <laughs> Time passes in the standstill. In standstill, the sun gleams from high above the main building. It hits me directly in the eyes, but I just squint instead of moving. In a bit, it becomes painful to keep my eyes open just a little. My temples start aching. My head hurts. I think this day gave me a headache. Can you believe it? Are you hungry? How is that related to a headache? It's not. I ask because I am. Her oblivious seriousness melts my irritation with this ridiculousness, and I find the corners of my mouth turning slightly upwards again. You know what? So am I. I'll go get some food for us. What do you want? My treat. Doesn't matter. <laughs> Returning with the food, I give one portion to Rin, taking the other for myself, and we dig in without a word. Rin looks upwards, fork hanging out of the corner of her mouth. What are clouds? I always thought there were thoughts of the sky or something like that, because you can't touch them. You thought like that when you were a kid? <laughs> no, last week. Maybe because sometimes my thoughts feel like clouds, fluffy and white and slow. Like the sky was in my mind. Like my spine was the sky. <laughs> The sky of your mind? Close your eyes and think of sky. You won't be able to think of anything else until you stop. <laughs> I love Rin. And I try it. It works. Magic? Opening my eyes, I see Rin studying me with her eyes. It feels uncomfortable because she doesn't say anything. I turn away. Clouds are water. Evaporated water. You know that they say that almost all the water in the world will at some point of its existence be part of a cloud. Every drop of tears and blood and sweat that comes out of you, it'll be a cloud. All the water inside of your body, too, goes up there for some time after you die. It might take a while, though. <laughs> your explanation is better than any of mine. Because it's true. That must be it. I carry on eating the food before it gets cold. The wall offers a bit of blush shade as the sun revolves around the dome of the sky. But the afternoon is already slowly making way for the evening, so our lunch becomes more of a dinner. Or whatever the word is for any regular meal like this. Despite what I decided to call it, it certainly hits the spot. Haven't eaten a bit, haven't eaten a bit since forever. My appetite filled, I let out a satisfied sigh. Rin hasn't eaten all of hers, but seems to be done with her food as well. I lean back, taking in the atmosphere. The crowd has thinned already, uh, thinned already, but the activities are still going. Everyone seems to be enjoying themselves. And why not? It's warm, the kind of perfect summer day when it's hot but not too hot for comfort. The sun will set soon. Time really has flown by. We've been sitting here for six hours. Yes, we have. Do you want to do something else now? No, not really. Me neither. She adjusts her position and leans against the wall and I followed her lead, relaxing my body. For minutes on end, we sit there without saying a word. I'm trying to feel Rin's mood for... 
from her demeanor, the tension of her muscles, the tiny expressions pleading on her face. It's no use. She's unreadable as always. The crowd swells to and fro, people happily chattering with each other. Very few people pay real attention to the mural and even less to us. I fiddle with a few odd pebbles absent mind. The act of doing something just for the sake of doing something, the pinnacle of idleness. Inch by inch, the sun creeps lower and lower towards the tree line, changing the color of the sky close to the horizon from golden yellow to orange and red as the moment of sunset draws near. I feel like my stomach is filled with lead after eating so heavily, but the brick wall feels surprisingly comfortable against my back. I try to fight against the drowsy feeling that is overwhelming me to no avail. Oh, they're gonna, he's gonna fall asleep. I wake up with a start. A low boom reverberates through the school grounds. After images of bright sparks flash through my vision like stars. Something rises towards the sky from the direction of the sports field. A trail of fire, a trail of fire, a tail of fire, mm, mm, a tail of fire trails behind it until a burst of red and yellow flame lights the sky high above the school with another loud boom. Wow, fireworks. A sudden flash of light against the canvas of the night sky wakes me to realize that it's actually dark already. How long did I sleep? I feel groggy and can't feel my right arm. A trail of fire. Spooky. As I attempt to flex it, I realize why. Oh, oh that's cute! <laughs> Rin is leaning heavily against my shoulder, almost falling on my lap. She is fast asleep, not even phased by the fireworks. Her mouth is slightly open and her eyes are peacefully closed. A sleeping childlike face of the innocent. I shake Drin. Drin. I shake Rin gently with my free arm, trying to wake her up for failing, unfailing that. Move her so that my other arm is liberated from its pinch. Rin's face twitches and her eyelids shut tighter as if to resist wake, against waking up. She gradually opens her eyes but keeps them half closed, letting the light from the fireworks sneak just past her eyelashes so that the green irises mirror the bright flashes of the explosion, then looks at me and frowns. Just a while longer, okay? <laughs> Rin's voice is drowsy and slow, leaving her almost unintelligibly muttered words hanging lazily in the air. <laughs> that is the face of love. It seems she's not entirely aware of the situation. Rin's head drops back on my shoulder as she leans against me with all her weight. She snuggles against my side, trying to make herself comfortable, but making me feel very uncomfortable at the same time. <laughs> Callius! Oh, I totally forgot to tell you! I'm so sorry! I'm sorry, it's been a day. It's been a day, but I am here. I apologize. Thank you for hopping on. She said something extremely cursed to a friend. That's something I do, Callie. It's just, yeah. I become intensely, almost painfully aware of Rin's warm body and the deep, peaceful movement of her chest against my arm, her breathing soon returning to the even rhythm. I can't help admiring her gift for sleeping or the ease of mind of hers to use someone she has known for less than a week as a pillow. Now, The rockets rise up to the sky one at a time, breaking into flowers of red, green, and gold accompanied by oohs and ahs of the audience. I try to push Rin's disconcerting proximity out of my mind. Okay, I'll have to take a look after the stream if you don't mind. But what can I do about it? I just hope her short while her short while really is that. One by one, the glittery bursts are born and die in a blink of an eye, coloring the dark night sky into a constantly changing abstract painting. I listen to the low booms of the explosions and Rin's quiet breathing, trying to clear my own head of the post-awakening disorientation. Thankfully, just a while longer really proves to be just a while, as Rin stirs from her slumber and wakes up again before the fireworks are over. I fell asleep. She finally opens her eyes completely and blinks a few times. <laughs> you fell asleep on top of me. Twice. You didn't like it. Well, despite the inconclusive, inconclusive stammering, Rin sits upright, drawing herself away from me. Well, you are heavy. It's a lie, she weighs next to nothing, but I have to get a jab back at her, even if it's under the belt. My mock protest fails to draw any reaction as Rin's attention is drawn upwards to the flashes of the fireworks. The <laughs> master of romance. <laughs> she seems hypnotized by the colorful play of the explosions. 
A slight tingling sensation goes up and down in my arm as blood starts to circulate again. It's unpleasant, but it helps me get rid of this dizzy feeling. More and more rockets rise up to the sky, the bright colors of their explosions reflecting from the clouds. Both of us stare at the fire fixedly through the canopy of the trees and drawn by the show. We would get a vastly better view of the sky if we moved it even a couple yards, but neither of us bothers to even suggest it. I really do like fireworks, even though looking at them makes me feel kind of sad, I think. It's like they want you to look at them so bad that they're loud and bright, but when someone looks, they're already gone. It's like they were not even real. They are real, I can tell you that. All oh, this is real, you know? If you think about it, nothing really lasts for long. Even something like my life or yours just a think of an eye in the history of everything, like one of those rockets. Poof, and we're gone. But we're here, aren't we? Yeah, this is reality. Rin sing next to me the loud bangs of the fireworks, the vast and limited sky. These things are definitely real, even though they won't stay here forever. Oh, <laughs> oh! I feel warm inside, and I wonder if it's because Rin is so close to me, or just feeling of being alive. I don't really know what I should say next. <laughs> me, that's all right. Maybe I'm just talking to myself. But you know, fireworks are pretty. But in the end, it isn't so. <laughs> <laughs> right? But in the end, isn't somehow silly to spend so much money on a fraction of a second worth of pretty squarkos? <laughs> Rin rips her gaze off the still ongoing spectacle and leans backwards, looking at me with her repulsed face. Wow, I never expected you to be such a cynic. Just enjoy things, Sasao! Enjoy things in life! Cynic is a pretty harsh word. Rather than that, I think of myself as a realist. Isn't a real just a word for what a cynic calls himself? <laughs> with the repulsed look. The final rocket goes out with a bang of silver and blue, leaving the grounds eerily silent for a moment until the ground starts moving towards the main gate like a, main gate like a cattle herd. <laughs> Whiffs of gray smoke drift towards the dorms like from the sports field. Pungent, Soviet, sulfurous smell of gunpowder it carries long feels like sticks to my hair and clothes. Was that it? I think so. I stand up and stretch my sore back. Sleeping against a brick wall wasn't such a good idea after all. Wind stands up as well and turns to face me with an expectant gaze on her tired features. Excuse me. Although she seemed to have trouble focusing her eyes, she is looking straight at me. Something I feel has not occurred too often in the past week. Um. So. <laughs> I suddenly realize we have been almost on a date here, even as if by accident, even if we did nothing. But it wasn't. So, why is blood rushing and my speech stammering? I don't know what I should say, especially since it seems that Rin is waiting for me to say something, but luckily she solved that problem for me. Good night, Hassau. She gives me one more lingering look, measuring me from tip to toe. For turns around on her heel and skips off, disappearing into the crowd. Okay. Good night. <sighs> I'm left standing there, giving my response to the cooling night air. <sighs> the festival turned out to be nothing like I expected. I ended up spending all the day in one spot with Rin, even though neither of us agreed on nor suggested that we do anything. I just didn't have anything better to do, and evidently, neither did she. Rin's warmth lingers for a while longer in my body before disappearing into the following night. Oh, let's see, let's see this. Beautiful. Aww. Aww, Rin! Rin! I love you! Heck yeah. Oh, this is cool. Aww, this is so cool. I love it. Aww. This is so cool. This is beautiful, jeez. Rin. The music's really pretty too. I like the music. Discon disconnect. That was really good. I really like that. Oh my gosh. I like that a lot. It's already half past eight, but this morning's class has not yet begun. We were supposed to have physics, but the teacher is nowhere to be seen. Had I noticed beforehand, that uh, that was that was good. 
I love that. <laughs> I would have slept in too. Whoa. <laughs> Suddenly, the classroom door slams open and Matu grunts his morning greeting to us from the doorway. Good morning, everyone. Matu looks like he has not slept at all. Oh, God. <laughs> yes, thank you, Callius. I appreciate it. <laughs> oh, dude, the stubble has messier than normal hair and the stained dress to create... <laughs> Create a less than favorable impression. <laughs> I guess you had fun last night at the festival too. Excuse my being late. I ran into unexpected problems. I'm using that one for a festival like this, but I hope you all had a good time. <laughs> After all, these sorts of events are important for you all, so they give you a short reprieve from schoolwork. <laughs> the class replies with various degrees of enthusiasm, and Matu pretends to proceed to take role and get started. Right then, today's subject is photon particle physics. Ugh. Before long, I have descended to a comfortable coma like state along with the rest of the class, letting Matus. <laughs> Matus, okay. Yeah! Matus' rambling speeches pass through one ear and exit the other without leaving a trace. That's me in school. Now, who can tell us the solution to this problem? He's written a rather easy equation on the blackboard. Desperately, he tries to get the class to participate. Nobody? Come on, guys. Nakai, how about you? I'm fairly singled out and cornered. I give him an answer. <laughs> that scare little children senseless. Precisely. Good work, Nakai. I'm both disturbed and honored by the fact that he can remember my name only when he gets our train. Ooh. <laughs> Rose, I... Rose, I still need to find, um, I still need to find more, uh, more sounds. I'll do that sometime soon. From what I've seen, Matu has serious trouble remembering the names of anybody else in the class. And most of them have been here since the year. <laughs> Ew, no! The room settles into... Thanks, Steely James! I appreciate it! I know, I need to look up blurp and then... Yeah, I need to do that soon. I'm just, I just, I'm just, you know, lazy. But we'll do that soon. I'll do that. Yeah. The room settles into a dreary mood. Students and teacher like trying to get back on track after the festival. Good. I see. There's so many good memes out there. I need to figure out what memes to use. You know. Yeah. I figure last week must have been frankly for everyone. Not a minute too soon. The lunch bells ring. Make way. Important business. Oh gosh. Okay. <laughs> no, I'm not using Jane. I love Jane. So, okay, so Steely James. So, um, me and Rose were at work today, right? And I think it's what you're referring to. I don't know. I'm so tired. But we're at work, and this and one of the this guy runs down the hallway towards the bathroom, like full on sprint. So I send Rose a message and say gotta go <laughs> and, then, and then Rose on the other other end just like crying and I'm with a member and I, was, I start crying too and I'm like I am so sorry it was amazing <laughs> I turned my head just in time to see other people scatter out of the way as someone turned <laughs> from the far end of the corner towards the stairwell <laughs> and then Rose's crying made me cry it out it was so funny I was dying Oh jeez. It's too late to realize that I'm standing in the middle of the corridor directly in the way of the oncoming human projectile. I try to get back towards the doorway, and finally the person running towards me dodges in the same direction. Ugh. In the following fraction of a second, several things come to mind in sequence, yet almost simultaneously. <laughs> I love Emmy! She's so cute! First, I recognize that the girl who was on collision course with me is Emmy. Second, I realize that, somehow feel that it feels somehow very natural to be tackled by Emmy once again. I could feel almost comfortable if not for the reflexive panic and terror. <laughs> oh, jeez. Oh, no. God, Emmy, no. Emmy, Emmy. <laughs> Third, Emmy seems to be carrying a foot-tall stack of papers while running in the hallway. She crashes into me, but the least impact was the grazing one over my arm this time. Owie, why does this always happen to me? Gee, I wonder. Could it happen? <laughs> Emmy, but she's so cute. Look at how cute she is. Could it possibly have anything to do with you running through the corridor like you were on fire? 
She whimpered regretfully, looking like a hurt puppy. The sight makes me regret my snappish comment the very instant it emerges from my lips. But I was in a hurry. I can tell. Sorry. Don't worry about it. Emmy wails weakly one last time and rubs her forehead as if to expel the ache while her gaze sweeps over the hallway floor. Oh, Emmy. As she notices her neat stack of paper spread all over the floor in one big mess, she lets out a horrified yelp. Ah, the printouts! Oh no, oh no, what am I going to do? Kids will give me hell if they get dirty! They're probably fine. Let's gather them back up. It won't be a problem. We quickly round up the papers and Emmy tries to sort the scattered pile on her hands back into the orderly stack it was. Where are you going? Nowhere in particular, I guess. They don't want to be left alone with Machu in the costume. I think he has a hangover. Have you eaten lunch? <laughs> I love her. I think she's so cute. Look at her little face. Not yet, but I'm not feeling very hungry anyway. She looks at me incredulously as a daddy my sanity for letting such a thing out of my mouth. You should go on the roof. I promised Rin I would eat lunch with her. I bet she'd like company. Uh-oh, my lunches with Rin have been remarkably unsuccessful. I know where this conversation is going. It's hard to not get drawn along, so have little choice with the play ball. Yes. Yes. I, I, I have to agree. <laughs> Rose, what's in that face? <laughs> oh, jeez. Okay, I'll go pick up some bread or something first. Emmy smiles brightly before I say anything farther. No, no, I'll go and deliver this super quick and then go buy lunch for us and ran to of course. What kind of bread do you like? It's fine, you really don't need to. Don't worry, it's all right. Consider an apology. I'll be right back before you know it. I'll be back before you know it. It's not right. <clears throat> That's what I'm worried about. Don't get into another accident. Emmy starts walking down the hill, but she's still talking to me. She isn't watching where she's going. I won't. Oh, geez. Famous last word. She's always jogging down the hall, and she shouts that not-so-reassuring promise back to me. Sighing quietly, I stop plodding along in her wake, but instead of taking the stairs down, I climb upwards. The stairwell up to the roof is unlit and just as creepy as it was before. The door squeaks weakly and protests as I push it open. <laughs> Rin is there too, like Emma said, lying on her back at the other end of the pebble-covered rooftop for some reason. Predicting something unnecessarily strange again, I walk to her as slowly as possible. <laughs> You'd be rich! Hello. She sounds, <clears throat> she sounds very drowsy as she says that, stretching the end of the word with a slurred voice, despite that her eyes are wide open. I look down at her, my shadow overlapping her face. What are you doing? Rin raises an eyebrow. <laughs> I thought you had a heart problem, not an eye problem. <laughs> she answers, challenging the rationale of a perfectly valid question without even tilting her head to look at me. Corinne's smart-ass comments are infuriating. The worst thing is I'm not sure if she's doing it on purpose or not. Alright then, let me rephrase. Why are you lying on your back on the rooftop? She gives a lazy shrug and sniffs dismissively. I'm trying to experience. People probably don't do this enough. <laughs> what exactly are you trying to experience here? I can't really tell, but there's probably a reason people don't do... Whatever. What? Wait, what? What? Wait. I'm so scared. She doesn't play dodgeball with me. She's playing dodgeball with me again, answering my attempt at small talk with riddles I don't want to puzzle out. But I don't want to ignore her either. Yeah, but the reason that everyone is too busy with their lives to pay attention to the really important things. Like watching the sky? She tears her gaze away from the sky and finally looks straight at me. The penetrating deepness of her eyes once she focuses them on something is startling. You know, if you were a girl, I'd be able to see your panties. <laughs> Rin! 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 <laughs> if I was a girl, I wouldn't come this close to anyone who tries to sneak a peanut in my panties. I have that much common sense. I wouldn't either, but sometimes it can't be avoided. Like now, for example. To tell you the truth, I don't even really, really want to peek at your panties. <laughs> Rin, you're so great. Under pants are the soul of a girl. You shouldn't peek at someone else's soul, even if you are not a girl. As a guy, I guess I can understand this. To us, there's some half physical object that we can't quite comprehend. Yeah, that's exactly how I think about them too. <laughs> what a coincidence. It really is. So did you have world history in the morning class? I skipped class. To do this? Well, I'm not exactly doing what it looks like I'm doing, or at least I think that's what I'm doing. It doesn't look like what I'm like, but from your perspective... 
Probably. Yeah. I skip class to do this. I guess whatever your reason is, it's, good, it's as good as any. Rin. Giving in to the tired feeling in my legs, I sit down on the roof next to Rin. The pebbles are not the most comfortable bed in the world, but if she can stand it, then I should be able to as well. well that's kind of what Rin we're talking about here. What are you waiting for? Hmm? Try it. I bend my neck backwards to look where she is looking. The silvery blue sky dotted by herds of cloud sheep filled my visions, filled my field of vision entirely. Ugh. While it's pretty, the view is nothing special, even though the weather is fair. Ah. Okay. I give a shrug, trying my des best to imitate the nonchalant manner which Rin seems to have evolved to perfection, and lie down on my back. The stones poke at my back through my thin... <laughs> yeah! That would be bad! That would be very bad! Through my thin shirt whenever I shift my weight even a little, forcing me to keep still as possible. I tried to ignore the discomfort in myself, instead concentrating on the vastness over us. Far above, the summer clouds drift silently across the dome of the sky. Neither of us has anything more to say. The silence covers the rooftops. <laughs> Rin! Rin! <laughs> The subdued noises of students on their lunch break, cicadas in the trees, and traffic buzzing past the school are humming pleasantly somewhere in the background. Listen, I had a great time yesterday. Did you? Well, to be honest, <laughs> no. But it was alright. It was probably the longest I've ever sat in one place without doing anything, which is kind of impressive. <laughs> I try to make it sound as convincing as possible. Is that impressive? I think it is. I'm usually too restless to do anything like that. God same. I think I had a good time, too. A cloud passes above us, casting a shadow on the school. A chill surges through me from the sudden change of sunlight to shade. <clears throat> I feel as that summer is not in its full bloom quite yet. The only measure of time passing is the slow pace of the clouds moving towards the town. <laughs> Sorry, I'm thinking about funny stuff. Straight beams of golden sunlight sleek through the gaps, blinding me for a moment whenever they hit me directly in the eyes. The blue of the sky looks so unreachable. This reminds me of the time I spent in the hospital where I was bored out of my mind on a daily basis. Somehow, it didn't matter after a while. I learned to appreciate other things besides watching TV and gossiping with people I didn't even like. Yeah, Rosa. <laughs> I'm thinking about when you had the water bottle. <laughs> I don't even know how to explain it. When you had the water bottle, you're like, why do people drink like this? And you, I, I don't, it was, I don't know. A comprehensive sensation of calmness spreads from my sight to my other senses, from finally hitting my brain. And I'm really thirsty. Hold on. <laughs> Rose, you're rubbing, rubbing off on me. <clears throat> An airplane zooms by, leaving two thin contrails in its wake like a pair of chocolates dropped from one end of the sky to the other. I wonder where it's heading. The low din of its engines carries all the way down to my ears, although it's barely audible over the racket from the quad. It's nice. Excuse me. It's nice. But I don't understand why this is more important than going to class. I don't care. It's hilarious. Isn't it good to do something you like every once in a while? Of course, but what are you doing? Emmy has snuck up on us without either noticing and is only a step away from me holding several packages wrapped in plastic film in her arms. <laughs> she leans forward and peeks over at me, overshadowing my face like almost exactly, almost exactly the same way I overshadowed Rin before. <laughs> I wonder how weird this looks, the two of us lying on our backs on the rooftop. That's what I asked, too. I'd be more concerned about what you were doing, what you were doing. If I were you, I wouldn't come that close to, <laughs> to people who can see your panties. Rin! Emmy's voice is skin loud, but she quickly takes a step backward, pressing her hands against the front of her skirt so abruptly that the parcels of bread she was carrying fall. I quickly avert my eyes and glance angrily at Rin. She pretends not to see me. The sound wasn't like that, right? Right. She Emily's em, bleh. Emmy scowls at Rin and crouches down to pick up the packages. She's so angry. Look at her. She wraps the dust off them and skips lightly around me to Rin's other side where she sets herself down. Anyway, here's your bread. Sorry it took a while. That's alright. Thanks for treating me. I pull myself up into a sitting position and gratefully accept the bread Emmy is offering. All three of us ravenously dig into the simple meal. The bread is surprisingly decent and readily fills my stomach. I follow from the corner of my eye to the skill, the skill with Grin handles her bread between her feet. I haven't seen you on track in a few days. Oh, right. I figured it was too heavy a routine for me to start with. 
so you've been doing something else. I've been considering my options. She frowns but doesn't pursue the issue farther, but for which I'm thankful. He's like, hmm, she's scowling at me. Emmy seems pretty headstrong. I wouldn't really want to get pestered by her about this on a daily ba basis. I have enough burdens to bear as she's doing Misha already. We barely finished lunch before the bells ring, calling us back to our classrooms. Kitcha! <laughs> Misha waves at me as, I, as soon as I enter and starts talking before I even make my way across the classroom. How was your festival? Did you have fun? Um, still so somewhat decided on that. I'd say probably. Why? <laughs> just asking, just asking! Her eyes glint in a way that tell me she's not just asking. I can't even start to guess her motives, though. As the well-timed entrance of the English teacher prevents us from talking farther, Misha falls back to plan B. I was there all day with Sushi Chan. We had a lot of fun. Weren't you supposed to be doing work? Don't worry, everything went well. Really well. I don't reply to that and she leaves me alone after Zune demands her attention. My own attention, on the other hand, is directed out the windows. Now that I look at it from here, through the window and the foliage is outside, the sky seems smaller. I catch only small glimpses of blue. Everything else is a clutter of noise right in the middle field of my vision. <laughs> oh, it's zooming in. Yeah, Misha, you freaking liar. What experience did Rin went out of staring at the sky? Surely she's done it before everyone has. Hassau, why are you questioning Rin's motives? She has her motives, like... She's not... Like I said, the inner workings of her mind are an enigma. Why are you questioning? See? It's no use trying to guess her mind, but if I don't do that, then I have no excuse for not concentrating on the teacher's words. I look at the scribbles appearing on the blackboard, trying to figure out their meaning with little success. English really is not my favorite subject. We have a strong mutual dislike for each other. A thick, hot afternoon light invades the corridor, making the air feel heavy and lazy. My body feels weighed down by it, and the drag its two doors down the hallway to the art room. Maybe this is part of the reason why I didn't join any clubs before Athens just aren't suited for activity. Yeah! <laughs> nice. <laughs> I, I, I knock on the door of the art room and open it. A girl who is possibly doing something important with the scroll of paper she's carrying turns to reckon me and smiles in a sweet, in a sweet if, if a bit confused manner. Hello? This is the art club, right? Yep, you interested in joining? Yeah, in fact, I might have already done so, but we'll see. Oh, she's cute. Lily! Lily! I love Lily! I give her a weak smile, and her and her own widens a notch, making me feel less nervous. Great! Have... <laughs> Jesus. Uh, have a seat, then. We'll start when the teacher gets here. <laughs> Lily, Lily! Without even scouting the room for a good spot, I walk quickly through the back of the room and settle myself on a free seat apart from everyone else. Oh, I. Oh. That took me embarrassingly long to figure out. I was like, where the heck is Lily? <laughs> a few. Other members are lounging in their seats, waiting for the teacher. Rin sits alone in a window seat, looking outside. She's, only, she's the only person here that I know, although guys I've really gotten along with my own classes here, too. Nobody else comes to greet me. Maybe introductions are left for later, so I just settle for the silent observation as well. One boy has sunglasses on. An on-site indoors where we not at Yamaku. I don't think he's the blind student Rin was talking about. The wait proves to be extremely short. Oh, not this guy. Ugh. He's so scary looking. Look at his face. <laughs> Look at his, oh my god, he's so scary. Uh, no, no, Namiya walks over to the stand behind his desk in three long strides and gives a smile and a flamboyant greeting. <laughs> Ew! Good afternoon, everyone. First things first, Hassel there is a new member, so everyone get along with him. He weeks at me unsettling. Ew. <laughs> Ew. <laughs> All eight members of the club, including myself, answer his greeting with considerably less enthusiasm. Still, people finally straightened up and their seats began to pay attention. I think some of you still have products to work on, so please continue with those if you'd like. As for the rest, I was thinking that today we could do some rough studies. How does that sound? Ugh. 
I don't want to look at him. I don't want to look at him. Nobody's answered except for some intelligible murmurs, which Nomiya apparently interprets as a unanimous approval. All right, then. Everyone not work on other projects. Choose a partner and draw a sketch of one another. You should be able to complete this today, but if not... <laughs> He's all like this. He's all like this. If I can, maybe you can hear it. <laughs> but if not, we can continue. Oops, sorry. We can continue it next time and even do it again if you find it interesting. Remember to pay attention to lighting and shadow and give it your best. Pairing up, I feel pretty awkward about it. <laughs> no! No! Shut up! <laughs> Stop! <laughs> I'm gonna ask to say something really, really bad. <laughs> but I don't know if I should, so I'm not gonna go there. <laughs> I wish someone asked me to be their partner. People stand up and move their chairs closer together, but nobody comes to me. Pretty soon everyone else has paired off. Friends team up with each other, but I'm left alone. Well, there is Rin. She's sitting in the farthest corner of the classroom, still staring out the window and seemingly interested in taking part of the exercise. <laughs> <laughs> she's, since she's the only one, one without a partner, I walked her a seat. <laughs> okay, I was like, I don't understand. That was so disturbing. I'm so disturbed. I can't. <laughs> but I can't see her face because her hair is covering most of it and she's looking away from me. Rin? I call out to her, no response. Hey, want to partner up? You're the only one I know here. <clears throat> She seems to finally nod my presence, head turning like a robot as she looks to see who is addressing her. Rin does not answer, and I don't want to repeat the question either. I'm sure she heard it the first time. Why doesn't she say anything? I can't be such an awful fate to be paired up with me, can it? She doesn't look at my face and says, stares directly at my chest and stomach. Oh, okay. Why not? <laughs> okay, good. Great. I'll get the stuff for us. Looking at the equipment Nomiya has prepared for today's meeting confuses me. Instead of graphite or pencils, we're apparently supposed to be ink sketches. I've never done anything like that before. The teacher, however, seems confident in my abilities to adapt to this medium. Simple! First you do the outlines in ink. You let them dry and then you shade with the diluted ink. This is called India ink. It works like watercolors. If you're uncomfortable with this, use a pen instead of a brush for the outlines. He's like, Hurrah! So he looks like... <laughs> Hey him! Got it. He's so scary. I pick up a paper of water cups, one pen for me, one brush for Rin, and an ink for both of us, and re then return to Rin. Grabbing a vacated chair from nearby, I set myself. I see myself directly opposite of her. Do you want me to do it with my foot or my mouth? What did you say? She, she tilts her head, her brows forming questioning arcs, as if she doesn't understand. That I don't understand the question. I don't mind drawing either way. It looks better if I do it with my foot, though. <laughs> like a pony! <laughs> with your foot, then, it's all the same to you. Not an answer, Rin gets up from her seat and cooks off her sandals. In two fluid motions, she picks up the paper sheet and drops it on the floor, then snatches the brush between her toes before sitting on the floor in a weird half cross legged position. Although I've seen her do everything with her feet already, from eating to painting, this display of dexterity is so prodigious that I stare at her just stunned. She's all, look at, she's thinking so hard. Rin contemplates her blank paper intently. The sharp tip of her brush hovers over the paper in anticipation. When she raises her head to see if I'm ready, it quickly turns my face away. I'll go first. Make a pose. What kind of pose? It doesn't matter. That's the point. You have to make the sketch of the impression you get not decide beforehand. I end up sitting in my chair while I was hanging lip between my knees. I look at her and she looks at me for a moment before beginning. Rin stares piercing but impassive as she were trying to absorb a part of it into her own self. I feel like I'm physically shrinking under the pressure of her gaze. I get the feeling that for the first time since it Okay, Rose, I'm probably gonna end in just a few minutes anyway. I'm freaking tired, but catch me on Sunday with Witchy Life Story. Yeah. Rin is actually looking at me instead of my general direction. She sketches with confident, bold tubes with a delicate brush, not caring about the potentially destructive consequence of an accidentally misplaced stroke. Well, Rose, if I if I don't end this, if I end this before you, if I don't end this before you go to sleep, you have a good night, okay? 
after she's happy with the line, she stands up to post me, stretching her back and legs. This time she doesn't look at me. Instead, Rin lets her gaze wander around the room. I'm relieved. It's so... Huck stuff out of even watch this whole thing, but Rin is very interesting. It's easier to stare at someone when they're staring back at you. Even so, I find it hard to get the sketch going. I'm not especially artistically talented, so I'm scared my portrait will turn into something disfigured, especially when it compared to my partner's skill. I don't want to embarrass myself too badly on the first try. Rin's not helping the process either. She doesn't stand still for even 10 seconds, tilting her head from side to side to judge the drawing, biting at her lower lip, looking unsatisfied, constantly shuffling around like she's on hot coals. I finally manage to make some headway on my sketch, and with my outlines done, we start inking in the shadow and light. Oh god, he's so creepy, just look at his face! The way up passes by and marks the beginnings of our sketches. Very good, standing figure is easier for a beginner to get a grasp of, but I didn't choose the pose. I look at him and then Rin in confusion, but he's already moving on to the next pair, and Rin sees Rin sees unresponsive. Just like when she was painting the mural, Rin has become so engrossed with her work that it seems like she has shut me, the classroom, and the entire world itself out from her own little sphere of extensive existence. Every now and then she leans backwards, seeming to get some perspective. Sometimes she bends forward, leaning down till her nose almost touches the paper. This rocking back and forth looks silly. He seems like a chill guy, but he's just so scary looking. He looks... He's like, ha! Ah. Suddenly, Rin proves she hasn't completely drifted off into a world of and squeak, uh, squeaks. Speaks. Are you having fun already? She doesn't raise her eyes from the drawing, which is a good thing. The breaking of the sound sends a dull surprise to me as if I had been electrocuted. I don't know yet. It's hard to say. I can't hear how she replies to my answer because it seems she's suddenly having a private whispered conversation with her sketch. I don't understand how she can draw, draw so well when she has the attention span of a butterfly. As if it's, it's, it seems so... Seems so uh, I go back to work on my drawing as well. I try to add texture to Rin's hair to somehow grasp the way of the golden afternoon sunlight. Sun lights her bright uh, flame and transfer to my paper in shades of black and gray. Somehow, this pen and the bottle of ink seem like such a lousy and inadequate tools for the task. Minutes pass, but the sketch doesn't matter like any more like Grim than it did before. Her voice wakes me up from my despair. What about now? Excuse me? Are you having fun already? Why do you keep asking that? Because it's a club, right? Clubs are meant to be fun. You're joined to have fun. Are you having fun? Is it important that I'm having fun? Yes. Okay. I'm having fun. Good. I wonder if I said that just to please her or if I really meant it. I can't really decide which it was. I don't hate this though. I can I say honestly say that much. It's good enough for now. Okay, I'm, I'm getting tired, but I got I'm gonna go just a little bit longer. As the allot of time to finish the studies quickly takes away, I definitely try to approve my awful sketch, but it doesn't seem to get any better. <clears throat> I want to start again from scratch, but what would be the point? There's no time for that either. Okay, everyone, that's it for today. Please turn in the drawings on my desk, and I'll see you all next Monday. That was actually pretty dang good. Like, what? I glanced at my portrait. It doesn't exactly look like Rin. I guess you could say it portrays her, but that might be a bit generous. The nose and jaw look hideous, and the shading is terrible. Granted, it's my first attempt at drawing with ink, but it's still pretty bad. That's not bad. She sneaked up behind me while I was lost in thought. Damn it, I was hoping I could smuggle the portrait to the teacher without you seeing it. Why? I'm not really happy with it. I wish I could draw better. You just need some practice. Can you take my drawing to the teacher too? Curious myself about how the sketch turned out, I peek at the picture. From the way Rin is drawing, it looked like she was really into it. Oh dang, Rin! It's excellent. Somehow, the seemingly arbitrary strokes come together to form an image on my face. From the shape of my chin to the messy hair to somewhat gloomy expression. Her sketch... I'm gonna be, you're amazing. I'm gonna, I'm gonna be, I'm not gonna be like, oh. Her sketch blows my mind. Wow, you're amazing. It's not that amazing, but thanks. I take a closer look at her work. It's still glistening with slowly drying ink. You know, I look kind of grim here. You do look kind of grim. I mean, I agree, but it's also true otherwise, too. Like, like this you, not the you I made. I do. I think so, at least. Her simple statement makes me suddenly feel incredibly self-conscious. I feel like I need a mirror right now to confirm or debunk Rin. It's a nasty feeling. 
Maybe it's just her. I hope it's just her that I don't look like this sketch to everyone. It's a good sketch, but somehow I get a really impressive feeling from it. I see. Anyway, it looks really good. You really are amazing. Thanks. I'm glad I could draw you. You are an interesting person. You are an interesting person too, but that didn't help me much. My self-deprecation has no limits today, but Ren ignores it all. I knew that I could never compare it, but to see the difference between my own eyes is quite humbling. See, I try to make you look like... Yeah, he is pretty miserable. He really is. He's like, what's the point? Like, it's just last a second. What's the... F Dude, enjoy things. See, I try to make you look like you think a lot since you, do, since you did a lot of thinking. And yeah, I might have overdone the fed up with life expression, but cynics are like that, right? Because yeah, he's a cynic. I want to retort something snappy, but Nia gives me no time to think, ushering us to the door. <laughs> Edgy. Hurry up, you two. While we've been chatting, the rest of the art club has taken their leave. I quickly pick up our drawing and take him to the teacher's desk before hurrying after Rin, who has already left the classroom. Okay. I'm sorry, guys, but it's late and I have to work tomorrow, so I'm going to call it a night. So I appreciate everyone uh, joining. Let's see. I will um, <clears throat> hopefully continue next Thursday. I don't think I have anything going on. And hopefully I won't be so tired. Yeah. But anyway, uh, thank you so much for joining. Everyone have a good night. Thank you.